Hey guys, hi, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video. Today I am here with my friend Katie from college who Hello. is new to the booktube scene. So welcome here, Katie. Thank so you. nice to have you. Those of you who are OG subscribers of mine, you probably recognize her face because I've had her on a couple videos in the past. We did a couple different book tags. We did a book haul once. We did a couple Alexander mm -hmm. Hamilton inspired things. We did a whole vlog where we yeah. went to see Hamilton in Chicago. So Katie has been around, but this is the like first time we've done a video since she started her channel. You want to give a little bit of a plug? For yeah. Uh, so follow me. Uh, my channel name is Patronosaurus Reads, and then I'm at Patronosaurus on Twitter. And I will have links to all of her stuff down there in the doobly-doo for you. But today we are super excited because we have collaborated and have created the original The Adventure Zone book tag. Um, I just finished listening to Balance. Uh, Katie has been asking me to listen to it for how many years would you say at this point? Well, I started listening junior year and I immediately knew it was something special so that's like three years at this point yeah coming up on that and I so. knew I would like it I just I need some time to <laughs> sort things out on my own uh, so pretty much all of October I just I didn't listen or watch or read or do anything that was not related to Taz so I am very much hyper fixating on this one thing and Katie was coming over for uh, the rooster teeth extra live stream, which is currently happening in the background right now, um, and I was like, hey, let's do a Taz book tag. This sounds like super fun. And basically what's going to happen is we have 20 different questions. We're going to be rolling some D20 die, and whatever number we get, that's the one we're going to answer. All questions will be down there in the doobly-doo for you. Uh, we're going to answer about 10 on my video, and then pop on over to Patronosaurus Reads and watch our video on her channel where we answer some of the other ones. So. Without further ado, let's get started. 17. 17. Clint, who is the dad of the people who do uh, Adventure Zone. And this is an author who wanders a bit, but always sticks the landing. You know what? I'm going to go with Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Um, I know it asked for a specific author, but this is the only book of hers I've read, and mm -hmm. I know she has more than just that one. But that book definitely wandered for a little while, but the ending was so satisfying. And what's interesting is it's a standalone book, and it feels significantly longer than it is. But it was so, so good, and I loved it a lot. My answer for that is Maureen Johnson. I've been reading, well, rereading the um, Truly Devious books in preparation for the final book coming out in June. Think. Sure. Yeah. You don't keep up with new releases. No. I don't know why I'm asking you. I don't read. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jared. I'm 19 and I never learned how to read. <laughs> yeah, the endings for those books are always really good. Like, they have been leaving off on really good cliffhangers, but sometimes I feel like there's a little bit of superfluous stuff mm. in the meat of the book that I'm like, you could have cut out a little bit of that. Maybe you'd like cut 50 pages overall to make it a little bit more fast paced, but I do really love those mysteries, so I'm kind of fine with it. Six. Six. So the prompt for number six is Loop and Barry, a romance that took the characters by surprise or alternatively a good slow burn. So for that, I've chosen Percy Monty from The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, mm. a book that took book two by storm two years ago when it came out. Uh, historical fiction about uh, this guy named Monty, he's going on his grand tour of Europe, and his best friend, Percy, who, uh, there are things that happen. I'm also going to choose an answer that is gay. Uh, I am picking Alex and Henry from Red, White, and Royal Blue because, wow! I love so them. <laughs> so bad. Because they deserve it, and my neighbors need to know. Two! We've not done that one. So, Chu is Merle, a character who always gets the short end of the stick. You know. You know. Okay. Um, so the first the first character that comes to mind is Ron Weasley from Harry Potter, but I hate Ron. And I feel like that's honestly a good, like, that, like, people are always hating on Ron. Nobody's yeah. really interested in him. It's because Ron's kind of a jerk. Um, he does have okay moments, but out of the trio, he's always the one that's like, you're worthless, you've got nothing going on, like, you're literally, you're the comic relief side character. And so I feel like people overlook him. Um, I'm definitely one of those people, because <laughs> I hate Ron. I think he's an awful person for a lot of the book series, um, who relies on other characters for his own personal character development, but it's fine, whatever. For me, I'm choosing Jude from The Cruel Prince. Jude 
is main character, and she's trying so hard to, as a human, to fit into this fairy world and get people to accept her, and nobody does, and they dump on her all the time, and she's just trying her best. Mm -hmm. Her best is sometimes very bad, because she's like 17, so she makes poor life choices, but like she's just trying. She just wants people to like her, and I think that's a noble goal, and people just do not treat her very nicely all the time. Twelve. Twelve is Carrie and Killian, your favorite queer couple. So I've chosen Mateo and Rufus from They Both Die at the End. Oh, oh, yeah, I haven't read that one yet. Ooh, it's good. That in kind of this, like, I guess speculative fiction type of universe where everything is the same except on the day that you're going to die at midnight, you get a phone call from this company called Deathcast telling me that sometime in the next 24 hours, you're gonna die. Mateo and Rufus both get that call and they log into this app called the Last Friends app, I think, and they become friends and connect that way and then become more than friends in the short amount of time that they have left. So I know it only takes place over the course of one day, but to me something that's really compelling about a story is the potential. Yeah. And this story is full of like lost potential, and that really hits me, so... Henry and Alexi! <laughs> I got other yeah. so good! Three! Three is Taco! Taco's my favorite character. Yeah. I love Taco. Uh, so the prompt for Taco is a character who is perfect and knows they're perfect. Uh, my first response is Magnus Bane from The Mortal Instruments. Because Homeboy knows that he's the best thing that's ever graced planet Earth. And he lets yeah. everybody else also in on that fact that he is the best thing to have ever existed. Mm -hmm. um, I adore him. Additionally, I feel like Crowley from Good Omens oh, would yeah. fit this profile because he definitely thinks he is the hottest thing in the entire world. And like, he is, he don't is. get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, so, and in the interest of not saying Magnus, I'm going to say Crowley. <laughs> Uh, and for me, I'm gonna say Nimona from the graphic novel Nimona. Uh, so she kind of signs up to be the sidekick to this like mad scientist evil guy in the kingdom, um, and she ends up helping him make his plans more and more evil. And she's very cool and fantastic. And if you haven't read Nimona, you should because it's very very good. What'd you get? Sixteen. Hey! <laughs> so for 16, it's Greg Gamaldus, a book that owes you $15, aka a book that you want to get your money back because it sucks. So a book that I would love to get my money back for is The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware's books get better as you go. Like the ah. two most recent ones were okay. very good. I really liked them a lot. But I think The Lion Game was like maybe her second or third book. And mm. it, I think it was the second one that she came out with. And it was just so boring. Like, I didn't really care about what happened because none of the characters were compelling. Like, a lot of times in mysteries, the characters are unlikable, and I'm okay with that because they're, like, hiding some dark secret and they're secretly terrible people or whatever, and, like, that part is fine, but they also weren't even compelling or interesting to read about at all. The conclusion of the mystery was not really satisfying to me either, so I was just like... I don't know what to pick. Books? No. Because the yep. entire House of Night series owes me so much money collectively because they were the biggest piece of crap. Oh my god. Like, I, I read all 12 books. I read all of them. The House of Night series owes me easy 500 bucks. Just like the amount of time that I took to read yeah. them. It's a crap book series with crap characters. Don't bother. It's so bad. There's so many better vampire books out there if you really want to read a vampire book. Like, yeah. genuinely, please don't. I yeah. hate it. 18! Uh, the prompt for Travis McElroy, who is your middleest brother, is a, an author who puts a lot of symbolism into their books. Do you want me to tell you your answer? <laughs> What's my answer, Katie? It's Paradise Lost. Well, that's the book, the author. Oh, that's right. Uh, John Milton. John Milton. John Milton. Uh, DJ Johnny Mills, yeah, as jump. we call him in college. <laughs> Jumping Johnny Mills. My homeboy Johnny Mills. Uh, I love that man. Oh, God. He put so yeah. much work into that book. And, yeah. like, I love it. Don't get me wrong, Kurt. That's also easily my favorite classic, but it's, ooh. The symbolism is just... For me, here's my one allotted Harry Potter answer. Oh, it's, yeah. It's J.K. Rowling. Yeah. 
I mean, there's so much, and a lot of it is probably unintentional. Um, like, there's a lot of Christian symbolism in Harry Potter. I mean, resurrection storylines. Yeah, yeah, death. Out, out of your nostrils. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of symbol, like the names. Yeah. Everything. It's yeah. very symbolic in Harry Potter. <laughs> Professor <laughs> Number 13 is Obvi, a dude bro you can't help but love. Hello, Rayan's channel. Sometimes I read uh, trashy adult romance books. Hey. And for me, that's War from the second book in the Four Horsemen series. Hmm. War by Laura Thalassa. So this series is about uh, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse riding and, you know, kind of destroying the world. First one was Pestilence, and then in the second one, War. Um, he is just destroying these towns, and he meets the main character, Miriam? Her name's Miriam. And he just, like, sees her, and instead of killing her, he goes, you're my wife. And she's like, what? It's aggressive. But he is, like, kind of possessive and a little controlling, but then he does have some growth and changes, and, like, he is kind of a soft boy underneath it all. And I really like these books. I'm ready to see what's gonna happen in book three with famine. Like, mm. I'm ready. Pestilence was better than war, but okay. I really, I really like war. I'm gonna go with a Sarah de Mass answer, which would be Cassian, uh -huh. because boy is just. I love me some Cassian. Yeah. He doesn't always make the best decisions, but like he's so lovable. I love Cassian. <laughs> Nat 20, baby! Uh, so Griffin, an author who is a master storyteller. Okay, I want to give you an actual book answer, I do. But I want to say Griffin because now that I've finished Balance, everything else feels pale in comparison. Mm -hmm. um, like, it was just so good. Um, I loved everything about it. He truly crafted such an incredible story. Um, and it counts anyway, because I'm gonna say the Taz graphic novels, so. I'm gonna say Lee Bardugo. She owns my soul. I have read the grocery trilogy, which was fine. And now somehow, okay, I haven't read Six of Crows, but like I already know I'm gonna love it. But I did read Ninth House, which Six of Crows is so good, dude. Mm -hmm. Though I know it's on my list. I'm doing it for best word of thought. Ninth House like was everything, and now I know that I can trust Lee Bardugo with my life. So she has so many incredible layers of storytelling, she's just fantastic. Wow, it's an eight! Crazy how I only had to roll it one time That's to amazing. get to that. So eight is Noelle, your favorite non-human character. So I'm choosing Aiden, the computer uh, AI system from the Illuminae trilogy. He's so sassy. He develops much more of like a human-like intelligence. He's so sassy, so great, so interesting to see a machine start to become human, or more human, and that transformation is really interesting to watch, so I love reading about Aiden. So I'm having a hard time thinking of something, aside from, like, Dobby. So I'll pick Dobby, because, like, Dobby's a good answer. Yeah. Um, I do, you know, I love Dobby, but... I bet I could find, I bet I could think of a different character if I actually like, tried hard enough, but I can't, and I can't think of anyone else right now, so. Dobby. I have one extra question that we're just gonna put as like an, a bonus at the bottom, which is, um, I guess if you add our modifiers and stuff, you get up to number 21, which is Voidfish, a story you wish you could forget so you could experience all over again. The Adventure Zone? The Adventure the Zone. Adventure the Adventure Zone balance like, arc. Yeah. Oh god, like, I, I think I texted you as soon as I finished saying, I want to just delete the entire memory of yeah. this so I could re-experience all of the different twists and turns and everything. It was just so, yeah. so good. Although, you know, it would be interesting to delete all of Harry Potter from my memory. Yeah, I was thinking And relive Harry, Harry Potter. As an adult. Yeah, I'm trying to think of stuff that I read as a kid that I was really into that I might see, like, Twilight, maybe? Like, reading Twilight for the first time as an adult with, like, my understanding of the world 
as a 24 year old woman and not like a 12 year old and like sexual harassment yeah like how would that color my perception of the book i don't i don't know i think i have a question that i've never asked you that mm -hmm. at least i don't know if i've ever asked you mm -hmm. did you like jacob when you first read the book oh yeah i was team jacob Oh, I owned a Team Jacob t-shirt. I mean, and I, not that it was better. I owned a Team Edward yeah. shirt. This is why I don't know if my opinion would change if I went back and like deleted my memory of it and reread it. Because even when I was like 12 and 13, I hated Jacob because I recognized what he was doing to Bella was wrong. Mm -hmm. Especially in like an eclipse and Breaking Dawn. Mm -hmm. Like, I was too stupid to recognize that what Edward was doing was also wrong. But I, at least I knew Jacob yeah. was definitely in the wrong. Right, so that is the original V10. Adventure Zone book tag. I feel like I have to say VV because they do it for the zone cast. <laughs> VV or... Adventure Zone Zone yes. book tag. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. In a comment down there, let me know what your favorite part of the balance arc was or who your favorite character is. Uh, try to keep spoilers to a minimum because what Griffin did is honestly just spectacular and I want you guys, if you haven't started listening to Taz, to really enjoy what he has done. We try to keep spoilers to a minimum with the questions in this book tag. So yeah, I'm gonna tag you, dear viewer, if you are interested in doing the tag. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you soon in another video. Bye!